So in this part of the course, we're moving on to talk about the idea of pragmatics. We spent a lot of time talking about semantics. We spent a lot of time talking about metasemantics. And now we're going to talk about this thing called pragmatics. So I'm going to talk in this intro video a little bit about what pragmatics is, and then I'll give you an overview of what's going to happen in the lecture on Austin. I'm going to start by drawing a picture we sort of saw at the very beginning of class. So in our very first full lecture, we talked about the idea that the, the study of language is divided into at least three parts. What's called syntax, what's called semantics, and what's called pragmatics. Syntax is something we've talked a little bit about, especially when we talked about Chomsky, but it's not something philosophers are primarily interested in. But syntax is basically thought of as grammar. What are the real grammatical rules of language? And the question that syntacticians are often interested in is, are there very abstract rules that govern all languages? Or is there what's called a universal grammar? That's something, that's a research program that Chomsky initiated. There's also what we call semantics, and this is focused on the particular meanings of words. And most of our course so far has focused on questions of semantics. We talked for a long time about the semantics of names. What do names mean? Is the meaning of a name an object that it stands for? Does it have a sense as well as a reference? Or should we think about names as descriptions? These are all different semantic questions. Now there's also a sort of different question sort of related to it about metasemantics, so how do, how do things get their semantics? And this is something we've been talking about up until this week. We've been talking about the question of the relationship between meaning and use. How exactly does use determine meaning, if it does? This is a question in metasemantics. Now we're moving over to pragmatics. Pragmatics is a little bit harder to define in some ways than the other two branches, but the way we're going to think about it is Pragmatics is the study of how we do more with our words than just what we literally say with them sometimes. So pragmatics is about going beyond the literal meaning and studying how we might use the literal meaning to do more than just the obvious things we might do with sentences, like make assertions that say what the sentence says. So this is going to be our focus for the next few weeks, pragmatics. In this very first video, we're going to be focusing on Austin's picture of speech acts. So in the reading for this week, How to Do Things with Words, Austin is really interested and in basically started the theory of speech acts. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to spend a lot of time thinking about the idea of a performative utterance. And roughly the idea here with a performative is that a performative utterance is an utterance that doesn't make a statement, but rather it, it does something. It does something other than just make an assertion with the, con with the literal content of the sentence. So hopefully you can see why studying performatives would figure in the, under the category of pragmatics rather than sentences. We're going to start by just introducing examples of performatives, and then we're going to see why perf performatives are interesting to think about. One reason they're interesting is because they look like counterexamples to a natural view about the relationship between grammar and what we do with sentences. So that's what we're going to talk about in video two. In video three, we're going to try and define what a performative is. And we're going to see it's actually pretty difficult. And that's going to lead us in, in lecture four to Austin's sort of final view of speech acts, which is more complicated. So because he couldn't really quite define a performative, he gives a more refined view about speech acts. And there the picture is that every speech act involves three different forces or three, three different actions. But one thing that we're going to see throughout is that for Austin, there is a kind of important role for convention in pragmatics. Convention for Austin is often what allows us to sort of go beyond the literal meaning of sentences to do something more. In the case of performatives, Austin thinks that conventions are what allows performatives to be performatives rather than something else. And he's also going to more and more generally say, when we get to this idea of illocutionary force, he's going to say it's really convention that determines exactly the force in certain cases. I highlight this now because it's, it's a very different view to some of the views we're going to talk about going forward. Next week when we talk about Grice, we're going to see a very different view where pragmatics is not really a matter of convention, it's really just a matter of people trying to interpret each other in a rational way and saying this extra kind of layer of meaning arises totally naturally and non-conventionally through just trying to interpret each other. So that's just a for some foreshadowing about where we're going and also 
or generally a roadmap for today's class.